Hi there. Takes you back to your childhood days. Playing in the woods, climbing trees, cooking food. The best times. Now we're back in this little woodland again. It is sort of a private woodland and it isn't mine. It's not far from the main road, probably 50, 50 meters away. So you might hear the background noise of traffic, uh, the odd siren. We're uh, probably only a half a mile from where I live. Now the main reason for this camp is this little item here. This is, it's a, if I could describe, a camping oven that I've made and I've brought a, a load of food with me and we're basically going to use the oven and cook all the meals on the oven. I was looking around the, the supermarket and you see there are, there are so many different types of foods, breads, pizzas and they all require cooking in the oven. So I thought I'll try that so I looked on, on the internet and there were a few ovens available. There's your Dutch oven, which is a great big heavy pot that you tend to use on a fire. Now, the location I'm in here, no way can I have a fire or anything like that. So I, I needed something a bit more portable and that I could use without a fire. So I saw these in America, but the postage was $60. It costs more for the postage than the actual oven. So I thought, as I usually do, I know I can make one of those. So I've got it made here, made it a little carry case uh, with my sewing machine. So we're ready to go, really. I mean, most of my normal cooking, if it involves a lot of walking, I use my own dehydrated food so I haven't got too much weight to carry. If I'm not too far from home, well then yeah, the frying pan. Full English, steaks, there is loads of things you can cook in a frying pan. My favorite item of cooking equipment. But I like to try things different, so I've made myself an oven. I'm going to finish getting my camp set up and then We'll assemble this oven and I'll, uh, I'll show you how it works. Torch in a little bit. Time to get this stove assembled. For the heat source, I'm using my uh, whisper light. Any stove, whether gas or liquid fuel, it'll do as long as it's got a remote fuel tank so let's have a look at this I can't make lightweight gear I can make quality heavy duty gear that will last a lifetime and longer but I have trouble making lightweight gear this weighs about two kilograms about four and a half pounds I know you'll be saying, well, my camping gear don't weigh all that lot. Ah, well, you can't cook in an oven, can you? You've got to use dehydrated meals if you're super lightweight. This will cook you some beautiful food. I dare say if I'd have made it out of one millimeter aluminium, I'd have cut the weight by a, by a half. But we'll see how it goes. So this is the main part of the stove it took a while to get this to fold like that I got there eventually to the bit fiddly to assemble that's a get that out the way that's a piece of stainless steel and that will be what the flame plays on to give the the heat source so we'll put that in first so this is the uh, the front of the stove and the door, the oven door can be a bit fiddly this, I'll take my glasses off so 
So that's the main part of the stove assembled. Now, we've got a thermometer as well, so we know what temperature we're cooking at. So that's the thermometer in. Got two trays. They're just simple bit of uh, wire mesh. Wait. And then the top of the oven goes on. And then the door shuts. Just put a bolt on there so sort of that it just holds it too. Right, so that is the, the stove. I'll try and show you a closer view of it. So that's looking at the side, we've got the thermometer mounted. And sort of looking to the front. The oven door, got ventilation holes in the bottom. And that's just looking at the side. So you can see it's just made out of two milli aluminium sheet a bit of angle and a lot of pop rivets so the first thing we're going to cook in the oven is a pizza now you can't beat a pizza especially when you're camping so I bought this pizza dough It's not so easy when you're outside. So idea of this is to pull it into shape. You can't roll it, it has to be sort of pulled. And I dare say, if you're from Italy, you'll be thinking, oh my God, what is he doing? That's the dish I'm going to cook, cook it on. And I've got a piece of baking paper on that tray so we'll just try and get this roughly to shape so it's got to be pulled so that's a piece of dough pulled roughly to, to size so you're supposed to prick the dough all over and that will stop it bubbling up. It is very sticky. And obviously pizza, you want a tomato sauce all, well it's tomato like a puree. That goes all over. So you can see that, I'll try and do it there. So you get your might put a bit more on so that's the tomato and then it's the, the filling of your choice well I've got a bit of ham So I'm going to put some ham on. And you can't have a pizza probably without pepperoni. A bit of pepperoni. Oh dear wasp. And then the last thing is to cover it in mozzarella so uh, cheese. So 
So I've got enough ingredients for two pizzas, so I'm just gonna cook this one. I might have the other one later on. So that's the pizza prepared. So we'll get the oven on. I'm gonna light the whisper light first. So that's the whisper light going now. Just put the... So the stove's on, so I'm just gonna let it get up to temperature. Uh, I want it around 240 degrees C. So we're up to temperature now. I can put the pizza in the oven. So I reckon that'll, it'll take between probably about 12 minutes I have tried these at home and about around 12 minutes something like that it was done very nice so we'll we'll have a look at it in a bit but we'll we're gonna leave it for about about 12 mil minutes something on those lines once the oven's up to temperature I can turn the flame down a bit it sort of conserves fuel a bit I should have brought some gloves it does get very hot just having a look at it boy it's looking nice that cheese is starting to bubble it's had about 10 minutes so I think we'll give it a bit longer Give it another probably four or five minutes I think make sure it's a uh, little bit crispy around the edges so that's at about 15 minutes now so I think it's time to take it out oh that does look nice the cheese is bubbling away nicely You can just feel the base of the pizza is nice and crisp and the top and the cheese all nice and soft. It's going to be too hot at the moment but uh, that looks lovely. That looks as good as you can buy. It is actually too hot but you can see it's cooked through that is beautiful. The cheese is melted. The ham, pepperoni is cooked nice. Just starting to, to brown the cheese. So I'm going to sit and enjoy that. If I can get that leaf out. Just been waiting for it to, to cool down. It was so hot. I left it for five minutes before I could eat it. But it, it does taste nice. It's sort of crispy underneath and you've got that pizza taste with the pepperoni now it's about it's about half past two in the afternoon so this is like my lunch I'm gonna have to get this lot eaten because around six seven o'clock it's it's sort of tea time and we've got even a bigger meal then so I've got to get this lot eaten so I'll be ready for my tea in a in a few hours Mm. it's a lovely bit of woodland this like I say it is private 
and perhaps I shouldn't be here but the people that own it probably don't even realize they've got it and it's just left overgrown so I know once I'm in here I'm hidden away and nobody's going to disturb me but you can see over here I just get through oops I've actually put a few bird feeders up I filled that up probably about four or five days ago and it's just empty it is like a haven for wildlife because nobody comes here Anyway, that pizza was nice. I think I'll tidy stuff up a bit and won't be long till it's tea time and we start on meal number two. Time flies by. It's tea time. Time for another meal. Another not run-of-the-mill camp meal for tea we've got steak pie chips peas and gravy can't think of anything nicer i've got the oven already on warming up so these are your your normal frozen oven chips Obviously I've had them with me all day and they have probably defrosted a bit but that might speed up the cooking. Got a nice steak pie from my local um, pie shop not far away not far away from here we've got some peas and gonna make a bit of gravy so we're gonna get this lot in the oven it could be 20 minutes to sell our rank for this um, we'll see how it goes I can get the chips on the top shelf Let's curl them the chips can and then the pie that will fit on the bottom shelf so we'll see what that's like uh, like I say about 20 minutes or so so it's actually had 18 minutes uh, I had a quick look at it at 15 and it, it looked like it was nearly done I could see the crusts were browning so I've given it a bit longer and I reckon it's all ready now chips are ready I didn't have to use the stove because I put the peas in water on here and within uh, probably three or four minutes they were bubbling away so I've got the kettle on as well where's my handle So I'll be able to make me gravy. That's the peas there, done. I'm just gonna leave that there. So we're ready to get everything out. Gloves next time. That's the chip. They're definitely done. Oh, I think I've overdone my pie. Could do with some level ground. Oh. 
so the pie's definitely done a little bit too much I thought I could smell it cooking yeah steam's coming out there that. that's definitely done so I'm just going to try and do the gravy now Strain the peas. Oh, it's hot. Get my water in. Oh, that pie is hot. <sighs> Bubbling away. My fork. I've lost my fork. Ah. So, pie chips and peas, not bad. Look at that, nice bits of steak. <gasps> that is boiling. So I reckon that pie, I did it for 18 minutes. I think 15 would have been the, the right time to have left it. Not bad that. Steak pie, chips, peas and gravy. In a woodland, not bad at all. So I'll get me me camp set up for for sleeping, and I'll uh, I'll come back to you in a little bit. See you then. Well, that's me settled down for the night. Where there's there's no rain, might be a bit of dew, but I've uh, I don't tend to bring any decent gear when I'm bivying like this. Got a pretty old ground sheet, quite a heavy and strong one. We don't want anything spiking through. Got my Thermarest mattress. Gotta be 30 years old. A very old, it's a lightweight down sleeping bag. One of my first sleeping bags. And then this Gore-Tex bivy bag which I must again have had 30 years or something like that so that'll keep any dampness off me I've got the tarp above me just in case we did have any rain but there's nothing forecast uh, I don't mean to say we won't get any so if anything happens in the night or there's a fox comes to see me or the owls decide to have a fight in the trees or anything like that I'll give you a shout otherwise I'll see you in the morning bye then good morning and it's a, a beautiful morning out there you wouldn't realize it in here but it's bright blue sky it was it was quite cool it's sort of like September so the nights can be quite cool but once that Sun comes out in the daytime temperatures seem to rock it I was warm enough no rain so uh, quite a good night's sleep uh, a lot of 
animal bird noises in the night, lots of rustlings, as I said, yeah, the place seemed to come alive in the night. So I've got my kettle on, just going to have a cup of coffee, get myself woken up. And then he's back to baking. Just get this done. But yeah, it's a, it's a nice morning. I suppose another month being October and the temperatures that have really dropped then. So I am sort of getting the end of the summer really. I would say, yeah, things will change in the next month. Anyway, I was just looking at uh, breakfast. Continuing with the baking theme this morning we've got croissants um, we've got a bit of jam somewhere yep a little pot of jam so these I got from the supermarket it's just pastry in there so we're going to be making croissants and baking them for, for breakfast so uh, I've not got the oven on yet I'm going to get the oven on get it up to temperature and then I'll show you how we prepare these croissants and uh, see what they will turn out like so I will talk to you in a little bit when I've got the oven up to temperature so this is your croissant pastry I know to have some flour on there but I haven't got any so I've got to unroll this I'll do it one by one. Using these trays again. See, uh, they're basically made up of triangles. So you get a triangle and then you just roll it in from the center. And they're as easy as that. This is sort of bought pastry. I dare say if you made your own pastry, put a lot more butter in, they would be a lot more tastier. Well, this is, is good as a demonstration and it's very easy. So you just roll it up from the, the centre. And that's uh, two croissants. I'm going to do four and then bake them at uh, different times. It is hot, you can hear it sizzling. So that's two croissants in. It's at about 250 again. It's probably, I'm gonna try and turn this, it's, it's not very good simmer control on the whisper light. See what they work out like. I'm gonna give them 10 minutes, I think. Oh, I've torn all the instructions off now. I think it's about 10 minutes, something like that can have a look see how they're going on and then uh, we've got jam put that on there reason I've got a metal plate I wouldn't normally use a metal one but plastic ain't gonna be that good on there so we'll give them 10 minutes and see what they look like
So a little bit different, croissants for breakfast. Mmm, very tasty. So I've got my other two croissants to cook. I'm going to have those, perhaps another drink. And that sort of brings this camp to an end. So I'll get all my gear packed up and I'll have a, a last word with you before I've got that long trek home. I've got half a mile to walk home. Whew. I should manage it okay. So I'll talk to you in a little bit. That's all my gear packed away now. I've left no trace, so nobody will know I've been here and I can come here another time. It was nice to be out wild camping and I think I just caught the last of the, the summer. It's been one of those years and I know I've not been out camping much, but it is gonna change that. These last couple of months, I have planned a lot more camps for through autumn into winter and into next year. Got a load of different locations to go to. Be doing a bit of bivying, bit of camping with me Sulu. So I'm I'm looking forward to a lot more camps. So I hope you've enjoyed this one. It was different. That's all I wanted to do. I like to do different stuff and that stove uh, the oven should I say I enjoyed making it and it did work for a, a little woodland camp like this it's ideal like I say I'm not gonna be taking it all the way up onto Kinder Scout but it is nice to try something different and that food that were beautiful I think out of all of it that pizza that were fantastic you, you could vary your toppings and yeah, pizza, fantastic. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll uh, see you soon. It probably will be on another camp. So thanks again. Bye then.